When we set up groundwater models, one of the basic things that we need to do is set up boundary conditions in the model to match the hydrogeologic conditions at the field site. So in a previous video, we saw that we could set up streams uh, as constant head boundaries. Now, typically we'll think of uh, flowing water in a stream or standing water um, as in many cases uh, connected to the hydrogeologic system, that the head in the stream or in surface water is the same as the head in the unconfined aquifer. And so this makes it a natural choice to represent those surface water features as constant head boundaries. One of the problems though is determining the upstream end of the, the, the stream here. So right up here at the, uh, the end of the stream, this is where the where spring uh, is the, um, marks the, the, the first point where water is flowing in this, this uh, drainage right here. And it can be difficult to determine that point. And so it can be difficult to tell how far up you should put the constant head boundaries when you're setting up streams in that way. And indeed, in a previous video when we did this, we had to adjust the position of the upstream uh, extent of the boundary uh, in order to, to uh, avoid the streams being losing up at their, their leading edge. Um, and so what we can do is use a different kind of boundary condition that helps to avoid this, this kind of problem. And what we'll, the, the way we'll do that is to use streams or to represent streams using a boundary condition called a drain. And uh, a drain has, in some ways, uh, a, the same behavior as a constant head boundary in that it fixes the head uh, in the, the model grid at a specified value. But it differs from the typical constant head boundary in that if the head in the model falls below the head that's specified at the boundary, then the boundary condition is not enforced. So in this way, the, the drain, and I'm using the term now in quotes, the kind of boundary condition that's called a drain allows water to flow out of the model and into the drain, but the drain cannot act as a source of, of water. If the water table drops below the level of the drain, then it's simply inactive. Okay, so what that means is that if you set up the, uh, set up the drainages like this, and uh, we, we define them as drains, um, then up here at the headwaters, if there's no water, if the water table is lower than the ground surface up here, and no water would be flowing from the subsurface out to, the, to the, this drainage, then, then simply nothing happens. Okay, so that'll be, uh, that'll give us, I think, a more realistic way to represent streams. So let me show you how we set this up. Uh, this model is very much the same as the setup that I used for the previous video where I had um, streams represented as constant heads. I first imported the, uh, the elevation data and I also imported uh, imagery. Uh, we'll see that in just a second. And I also um, uh, exported these and re-imported them. And so then I'll, if, if I wanted to use their photo, I would use this TIFF file. And from the NED, I created a um, 2D scatter plot, and then from the scatter plot, a tin. And I used the tin to um, lay out this, this network. And in this case, I extended these um, lines. They, they go along the stream valleys, and we'll see that in just a second when the tin is displayed. But in this case, I probably extended these, uh, th these lines, these arcs that will represent streams. I probably extended them further upstream than I did when I used these, uh, these, I, I used these arcs to represent constant head boundaries. 
Okay, so here's the, the 10, and you can see that I have these, these arcs um, going up the, the stream valleys. So we set that up in, in much the same way that we've set up other um, boundary conditions defined by arcs. And then to set this up as uh, drains, we can go here to the coverage, and I defined layer range. And down here, you can see there are a couple of different um, possibilities. So I, I selected this first one as a drain boundary. And then when we select the attribute, um, we will get, well, actually, let me, let's do this. These are all already set up as drains, but let's put in, let's put in one more and put in a, a new arc here. That's a little bit too far in. So let's see, um, put a, let the arc, and I'm going to put it in going right up this valley here. Okay, and see it's showing up as black because right now it's just an arc. We haven't really defined um, how it's going to behave. So let me just adjust this one so it f follows the... Uh, that's getting close. You can probably adjust that and get a little bit closer than I did. But what I want to show you is after I put in this arc, I'm going to go in here to the attribute table and let's select arc first. And um, I, I see all of these, these are the arcs that I've already defined and you can see they're set up as drains. This is the one that I just put in. And this is just the default setting that you, that you get when you first put in an arc and it's not really gonna do anything to get it to work. I need to go and define it as drain. So I could do that individually down here. Um, or I could set up the whole column right here as drains like that. Now, the other thing that I need to set up for the drain boundary conditions is the conductance. And this defines the resistance to flow perpendicular to the drain. And if this, is, uh, if this is relatively high, then the drain just behaves as constant head. But in some cases, an actual drain or perhaps a stream might have a stream bed that is um, lower permeability than the surrounding material. And, and this might be just a thin layer. And to account for that, we can, um, we can select the conductance here. But for us, at this point, we're just gonna select a value that, that is, uh, is high, so it doesn't really provide any restriction. And uh, 100 cubi or square meters per second per meter is, is high for this uh, particular setup. So um, we'll, we'll give all these 100 um, uh, value is, of conductance, and then we also wanna select here that we wanna auto assign the boundary condition to one cell. Okay, so that's the first setup, and then we also go here to the nodes, and we're gonna use the tin to define the elevations of the nodes. And you can see down here, this last one that we put in, the default is zero. And so this is important because if we were to forget to put in this tin, uh, the head would be assigned to zero, and, and that would cause problems with the, the model. It, it might actually converge, um, and it just, it would converge, but it would give us an incorrect um, result. So we set it for the 10 and then we hit OK and the um, color turns from black to green. And so this green color with these green squares are that, that's the, 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 the color code for drains in, um, in, in the, the code. Okay, so we've got the drains in there and you can see that they kind of some of them go outside of the, of the stream valleys. You'd want to be a little more careful than I was, but I just wanted to set this up quickly for illustration purposes. Um, and at this point, we'll go and we'll map this to um, ModFlow. And let's take a look at the, the mapping. Let's go down here. Oh, I see. We've got to, we've got to turn this on. I had the ModFlow turned off. 
And so you can see here, the drains are um, in layer one in this grid, and then um, layer two down here, and even layer three. Okay, the grid that I'm using is a, um, this is a, a multi-layer grid, but the, all the layers are horizontal for this particular grid. Um, and so that's why we see the, um, we see these boundary conditions stepping from one layer in the grid to another. Okay. So we've got this all set up and I'm going to turn off the topography. Um, and so I think we're ready to run it. And the way I've got this set up now is um, the the mod flow that we've got selected is, is 2000, and this is just a, a, a basic default value. Um, and this was this worked just fine when we had the heads as um, I had the streams as constant heads. But you can see for this case, you will see that for this case, this will be a problem. I guess actually before we run this, let me also point out one more thing: that for this particular model. What I did was to um, include this coverage here. It's called edge. And the edge is, is shown here. And these are drains that are put around the, um, the, the, the outer edge of the model. And what these will do is it'll remove water if the hydraulic head goes above this value. Um, we could also use constant head potentially um, and what we're doing, what I, what I did in this case was just fix the, the, the drain at the elevation of topography around the, the edge here. Now, this isn't a stream, so this isn't really going to be accurate. This, this is just part of the topography, and we know that the groundwater would be lower than this. But this is just to prevent the groundwater from mounding up um, like, like it may do um, if, we, if we don't put a... Um, don't put any, if we just use a, a, a no flow boundary condition here on the edge. So the, we still have some problems with the accuracy around the edge, but this is a way to reduce uh, the high heads that we might get with a, a no flow boundary. We'll still, of course, be interested in really just having uh, accurate results here in the middle. And the closer we get to the boundaries, the more we realize that there will be some problems uh, with the accuracy of the model as a result of the boundary. Okay, so if we go ahead and run this, um, we'll let it run for a little bit. What's gonna happen is that this model with the, um, the, with the simple default um, settings, this model is not gonna converge. And the reason for this is because this boundary condition, uh, this drain boundary condition, gives us uh, some, some nice capabilities in representing hydrologic conditions, but it ends up being a bit tricky numerically um, to solve this problem because as the water table moves up and down, as the numerical solution is sought, um, each time the, the water table moves above or below one of the grid layers, the, the location of the boundary conditions changes. And that introduces uh, nonlinearities in the problem that cause uh, the solution to um, be more difficult to, to achieve than for constant head boundaries. So you can see the, the default for this solver is 25 iterations, and I've increased that um, by, by quite a lot. And you can see the solution here is just kind of bouncing around, um, and we're not really getting a, a consistent convergence towards the right answer. So this could be kind of frustrating because th this, this in fact won't converge and it's not gonna give you the answer you want. So there are a couple of options here that um, can give you uh, some better convergence for this kind of problem. One is mod flow NWT. Uh, so if you select NWT, you're also gonna change the solver um, from PCG to an NWT solver here. So that's something to try. 
And that often works for this kind of problem. But when I was setting up this example, what I found was that NWT did not work for this problem, but this um, ModFlow version USG, um, it does work. And so we'll select USG for this problem and we'll use the SMS solver, sparse matrix solver. And we'll, let's just go ahead and try that. Um, so this um, Modflow USG, this um, had some pretty good success with this kind of problem using the Modflow USG. It, it doesn't solve the problem as fast as some of the other solvers, but it, um, it, 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 it seems to be more reliable in actually um, converging towards the correct answer. So actually, I, I take that back though. Here it solved it in just a few iterations and we have, we've got a result. So um, Modflow 2000 didn't converge in here in just a few iterations. After five seconds, we have a result. Well, let's, let's check and see how this result works. There's the hydraulic heads. And so if we look here at the contours, that all looks pretty good for head contours for um, uh, flow converging on the stream for gaining stream. And you can see this, this, good, this really shows you the, the power of, of this um, approach for using drains. If we zoom in, and I won't, that's a little bit too far, so I'm going to zoom back out. But if we take a look at these boundary conditions, um, here's the stream, and this is clearly a gaining stream because we've got the contours Ving upstream. But look, as we go further upstream, you see the contours are just crossing the stream going straight across. What that means is that there's no interaction between the stream uh, and the groundwater. And so in this case, because this is the headwaters of the stream, we interpret that, that this is simply, the, the stream is not, the stream, doesn't have, the stream valley doesn't have any water in it. The groundwater is below the, the level of the stream valley here and the, the first place that you have water uh, flowing to the stream valley is probably right here. You see how it, you have a little bit of a, uh, a, a V shape to the contour. You get a similar um, thing right here as you go up. Here, here it's gaining, here maybe a little bit, but here um, there's the, the, the stream is just, there, there's no water flowing in the stream at this point. You can see a couple of closed contours here. Um, those I think we could clean up by just adjusting the location of the, the stream. Okay, so that's, that's really in a nutshell how you would set up a, um, a drain to represent a stream. And you can see the value, I think. Um, this is really gonna be the preferred way to set up streams in, in your models um, to use this approach instead of a constant head. The problem that you may have though is with getting the model to converge. Um, and you can see that in this case, at, at any rate, the USG version of Modflow works really quite well.